everyone. I'm Jamie Yukis coming to you from the Los Angeles Bureau here in California. We're going to go to a story all the way across the country at the Kennedy Space Center. It is very exciting uh, afternoon there. In just a few minutes, Boeing will launch its Starliner spacecraft from that Kennedy Space Center in Florida. You're taking a live look right now. It is a crucial test flight for NASA. CBS News correspondent Chris Van Cleve is following the action for us today and joins me now from the Kennedy Space Center. It is good to see you, friend. We have not talked in quite a while. Great assignment for you. This is the third attempt. Tell us why. Why has it taken three tries? Well, Jamie, it is great to be with you and great to talk to you. Now, we are a little more than four minutes away. The four-minute countdown clock hasn't quite started yet. This is the third launch for Starliner, at least the third attempted launch. Boeing is hoping it's the third time is the charm. Back in 2019, they were able to launch Starliner. However, once it got in, got more or less into orbit, its onboard engines didn't fire due to a software glitch, so it couldn't reach the proper orbit to reach the space station, so that mission wasn't a success. Then, in 2021, they were on the launch pad, except they detected an, a problem. There were 13 valves in the propulsion system that were stuck open. They had to scrub the launch. It took them months and months to fix it. But now, Starliner is sitting atop an Atlas V rocket. It's a 172-foot tall rocket. Starliner is at the very top. Uh, once we uh, get down, uh, the countdown now at a little over three minutes, once we get to zero, this rocket and its two solid fuel boosters are going to roar to life and uh, send this capsule rocketing into space. The key part we're watching for here will come about 30 minutes after the launch when those engines that didn't fire at the right time, we'll be watching to see, uh, see what happens when it's their time to shine. That's everybody will be closely watching this. I love a good prop, by the way, Chris. Nice work there. Talk about the fact, you know, Boeing and SpaceX have a relationship now uh, with NASA itself. So you've got these two different relationships for NASA with Boeing and SpaceX. Why are they involved with each other? Break down for people why this is all happening. Sure. Back in 2014, NASA said we need to have some kind of a capsule. Here's a prop again. We need to have some kind of a capsule to take <laughs> astronauts to the space station. And if one is good, two is better. So NASA funded two, one from SpaceX, one from Boeing. And at the time, they gave Boeing about twice as much money, more than $4 billion to a little over $2 billion for SpaceX. And Boeing was seen as the space juggernaut. Well, SpaceX has soared and, and Boeing has kind of faltered. But if you're NASA, you want to have multiple options to get people to space in the event there's a problem. Think about it this way. If you needed to go to the doctor, you get in your car and the tire is flat. And wouldn't it be great to be able to get in the garage and get in a different car and drive to the doctor? Same yeah. concept for going to space. If something were to come up and suddenly SpaceX or Boeing wasn't available, they want another option so they don't have to rely on a Russian spacecraft to launch American astronauts. That makes a lot of sense. You know, I know it's going to take some time for the rocket to reach its destination, about 24 hours or so, and then what happens? Sure. So the first big test, of course, there, there are a lot of big tests. I suppose space is hard. So uh, after launch, <laughs> about 31 minutes in, we're going to be watching to see if those onboard engines fire as planned. Once it reaches the proper orbit, it, it is then headed for the space station. Uh, that's going to take about 24 hours. Then we're going to see if this automated docking system, this autopilot onboard Starliner, works as designed. It's not been tested in space before, so they want to see how that works. Also, on board uh, is a test dummy. They're going to get a lot of data from that test dummy. They're, they're calling her Rosie the Rocketeer. So no, no people on this flight, but there is a test dummy that will be bringing back data. If all goes well, this could clear the way for a crewed mission on board Starliner before the end of the year. And, of course, we're counting down now less than 30 seconds from launch here, Jamie. Well, less than 30 seconds. I know Rosie the Rocketeer, which I love the name, is on board. There's also about 800 pounds of supplies. Is that true? That's correct. So Starliner is designed to carry up to seven passengers or a mix of passengers and cargo. It's bringing some food uh, as well as some other supplies to the space station. We are five seconds out here, Jamie. All right. Let's stand by and we'll check in with you right after. Let's take a look. And lift off. Starliner is headed back to space on the shoulders of Atlas powered by a workforce dedicated to its success. We have confirmation. 
confirmation of a good MET EPIC timer on Starliner. Now let's execute its roll program. Uh, Already ready, it's now throttling down to maintain the crew acceptable heads up enemy position pressure on crew on board today. This is the first planned throttle down for Atlas in preparation for Max-Q. Max-Q, maximum enemy pressure on the vehicle. Right now, atmospheric forces are the highest Starliner Atlas will face during the uphill climb. Mach 1, Atlas 5 and Starliner are now supersonic. Vehicle now throttling up. Up, ne up next in about Some 20 seconds, Starliner's two solid rocket boosters will run out of fuel and burn out. And we have burnout on both SRBs. Good crew module forward link connection. Already ready is throttling back up to full thrust. Now that we pass the solid rocket booster burnout, you'll soon see those two solid rocket boosters separate from the vehicle. Atlas V now weighs just one half of what it did at launch, burning propellant at a rate of 2,800 pounds per second. And we have indication of SRB jettison. Atlas continues to ascend using solely the RD-180 engine. That's about 850,000 pounds of, of thrust at sea level. Already ready, is throttling down slightly as expected. Engine response looks good. Teams here on the ground confirming Starliner has a good trajectory. We're now two minutes and 55 seconds into today's flight. Flying at an altitude of 56 kilometers. Our next throttle down will be to control acceleration forces, uh, limit forces on the crew to below 4 Gs. That is safe for an extended period of time. One minute remaining in this burn. One minute to Biko. Already when he's now throttling to maintain 3.5 G acceleration on the vehicle. Starliner flying off the uh, east coast at this point at uh, altitude of 80 kilometers now, moving at a rate of 1,187 miles per hour. It's just passing North Carolina and Virginia off the northeastern seaboard. For those of you watching along the coastline, you might be able to see this launch. And we have Biko, booster engine cutoff. We have successful sta success staging, pre-start on the RL-10s. We have ignition on both RL-10s. Centaur's now gone to closed loop steering. Just passed through several milestones. Teams here on the, teams here on the ground reporting that all are looking good. Accident cover jettison there. That provided that air 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 air
Well, there you have it. Boeing has successfully launched its Boeing Starliner spacecraft. For more, I want to bring back Chris Van Cleve back into the conversation. He was watching the launch from Kennedy Space Center. I don't know about you, Chris, but I love these things. I nerd out over it. I, I love hearing, you know, engine response is good. All things look good here. Tell us what it's like on the ground. Oh, I mean, it is such a sight to see that rocket roar to life. I mean, you, you, you see the immensely bright flame that, that comes out of that rocket as it starts to, starts to lift off. Uh, and then you hear that, that rumble you hear on television. You feel it in your chest on the roof of the CBS News building here at Kennedy Space Center. Behind us is uh, a building where, you know, sort of the VIPs gather to watch this. We could hear them cheering at several points as uh, Starliner is on its way. Now, there are certainly a few more steps here uh, before folks in Mission Control are going to start to breathe a little easier. The, the biggest test comes up in about 25 minutes when... Uh, these little onboard engines uh, on the Starliner capsule have to fire. That didn't happen in 2019. It didn't happen as it was supposed to. There was a computer glitch. So the craft never reached the orbit it needed to hit the space station. So uh, all signs are good so far, uh, but there are some more tests to come. And, you know, the, the first 31 minutes here uh, are, are really critical. But, you know, one of the things that uh, I was thinking about uh, right about now, this spacecraft weighs seven or eight percent of what it did when it took off. That's oh, wow. how much fuel it takes to launch something into space. You know, and right now, Jamie, it's moving at more than 10,000 miles an hour uh, as it's making its way into the upper Earth atmosphere. It's pretty incredible when you hear those numbers, Chris, and break that down. And as you said, you know, you really do have to think about the fact that we still have a little time here to make sure that everything goes according to plan. As you said, that, that launch before didn't hit the right orbit. You think about that for a minute. The, everything has to go right. Um, are people still sitting there? You know, you hear the cheers initially, the launch is good. Are people sitting there kind of just making sure, holding their breath? Yeah, I, I am sure inside the Mission Control Center, you know, you're at a point now where you have seen this before. Certainly the Atlas rocket is a, a tried and true uh, piece of equipment. So, uh, you know, the rocket did what it was supposed to do. So far, Starliner is doing what it's supposed to do. Its next big test comes up here uh, in, you know, about 23 minutes. And, and, yeah, there are still people gathered outside. We can't see the rocket anymore. It is uh, well up the eastern seaboard uh, from where we are here in uh, the Cape Canaveral area of Florida at the Kennedy Space Center. But, uh, yeah, we're, people are watching very closely. Uh, you know, we are uh, listening to the mission control updates, uh, and so far, so good. But uh, you're not, you're not going to hear the first real sigh of relief, I think, until we get to about 31 minutes, 32 minutes after launch. Well, that's why we're going to keep you around. You're not going anywhere uh, for us at this point. And that's, I, we heard from Mission Control, those over North Carolina might be able to see it right now. I'm sure it's even past that on the eastern seaboard. So uh, we'll wait for it to hit that point where we can breathe a little sigh of relief, and then maybe we'll talk to you again. But Chris Van Cleve, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. My pleasure, Jamie. Good to see you.